let's learn about information modeling today. So assume that I am your boss and I told you to go to a client meeting. We are asked to set up a database for this client and we need to understand the information that they are working with. So the information that they basically want to store in a database. Please take a piece of paper and take notes as I tell you what this is all about. The client has customers. Uh, they want to keep track of each customer's first name, last name, shipping address and some extra information. They sell products, headphones, vinyl records, beamers and screens, all these kinds of things. For each product they keep track of the name, a description of the product, a price. A customer can place an order Obviously a customer can place more or more than one order as well, but uh, an order has promised delivery date, a shipping address and an order date as well. So you've probably taken uh, some notes by now. Take a look at the products first. They sold a lot of things, these, these clients. They sell uh, typewriters, headphones, beamers, screens, vinyl records, games and cameras. A lot of products. For each of these products they keep a name, a price, a description and a stock quantity. They had customers as well. For each customer they kept track of first name, last name, mail, phone and primary address. I didn't mention mail and phone but you can imagine uh, that we want to keep track of these things. And they have orders that are important. Each order probably has an order number, order date, promise delivery date and a shipping address. Now everybody can keep track of this information, everybody could keep notes and hand these notes into his boss and share these notes with his colleagues but wouldn't it be great if each of your colleagues made these notes in exactly the same way so that you could just send some drawing basically and have everybody interpret it in exactly the same way. And that's what we're going to learn today, how to make such a drawing based on a number of rules uh, with a fixed interpretation. So this drawing is called an entity relationship diagram and in this example it would look something like this. So what do we see? We have customer product and order in a rectangular shape. The line between customer and order and between order and product and all these other things that are in the oval shapes. So what does this tell us? A customer has a relationship with an order, an order has a relationship with a product. For each product we want to keep track of the name, price, description and the stock quantity. Uh, we want to add some extra information and we can. For example, a customer can place an order and an order contains products. Um, might also want to indicate that an order is placed by one and only one customer and a customer can place multiple orders. In this case the client told us that um, they don't have to place an order before being able to be called a customer. So a customer can place zero or more orders. An order contains some products, uh, one or more products, and a product can be ordered via zero or more orders. Basically saying that we can sell certain products more than once. We don't have to sell a product before adding it to our database. If you would turn this into tables, which we can quite easily, it would look something like this. And if you would fill the customer table, for example, uh, with three customers, it would look like this. The product table we can also fill and the order table as well. Now, to make it clear that a customer can place orders and an order always belongs to one and only one customer. We should add some kind of link to the customer table in the order table. Um, so in this case it's the customer first name. What if we have a second customer that is also named David for example. This system wouldn't work anymore so we replace it by a unique ID number. Just wanted to show you guys real quick what this would look like in tables. There's a lot more to, uh, to that side of the story. Not really important right now. So this is what an ERD or Entity Relationship Diagram could and should look like. Such an Entity Relationship Diagram is used to make a drawing of the relationships between 
entities. By now we know what an entity is, we know what a relationship is. In short, ERDs offer you a way to think graphically about the data that is relevant to your business. It doesn't have to be in the context of making a database. It's also useful to just make this to get a good understanding of the domain you're working in. The building blocks we use in entity relationship diagrams are, of course, entities, attributes, and relationships. An entity could be customer with the attributes first name, last name, and the relationship between customer and another entity. Order would be customer places order, for example. And then those relationships also have cardinalities. A customer can place zero or more orders. Zero or more is called a cardinality in ERD. If you go to an enhanced entity relationship diagram, an EERD, you also have a new building block called inheritance. So obviously this was a very, very short introduction. There's a lot more to it. Have a look at the link in description. Follow the course, learn how to make these ERDs, uh, learn how to model information. It's a very useful skill to have 